Okay, let us pray. We are praying and we're just going to... Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come before you once again. We ask, Lord, that you give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from on high. Open our, open our eyes, open our heart. Help us to be able to see and comprehend that which is before us. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Just want to take a moment and say welcome one and all to everyone. Welcome to our presentation on the novel coronavirus, better known as COVID-19. I know that everyone who is on right now should be aware of our topic and should, they should be aware of what is taking place worldwide. Uh, this virus is having economical, um, health, uh, spiritual um, consequences in every possible aspect that you can think of. And I just want to encourage indi individuals just to just remain calm, be mindful of what is before you, but whatever you do, do not panic. Um, know that God is in control and he has given us a message for this time. So let's go right ahead. These are the current fact figures, current updated figures um, up until today. The current situation that we are in, we have over 134,000 reported cases. Um, and of that 134,000, we have 4,970 deaths and over um, 6, um, 68,927 patients have completely recovered. Okay, so that is the current information as of today as we speak. Uh, medical staff are overwhelmed with the numbers of patients flooding into the hospitals. Not only is medical staff overwhelmed, but as of today, the NCA have canceled their um, March Madness. Um, uh, basketball tournaments and you know that March Madness makes tremendous amount of money for, um, for um, the NCAA and the NBA also announced that they are currently suspending all form of plays um, until further notice. Uh, many countries worldwide have suspended and basically banned all major gatherings. Uh, so the method that we are using, I would definitely tell you, is definitely the method that is user-friendly for this current situation that is before us. The question is asked, what exactly is coronavirus? Coronavirus, or we know it as COV, um, a, a, they are a large family of viruses that cause illness ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases such as uh, MERS, which is the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, or SARS, which is uh, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, or you can say the current uh, strain that we are de dealing with, which is called COVID-19. Um, who have officially reported that uh, the coronavirus is actually a pandemic, okay? So it is officially a pandemic, meaning that we are actually dealing with a virus that have basically uh, uh, spread past several continents worldwide, okay? So just want to let you know, as of today, it is officially a pandemic. Um, symptoms of infection of the COVID-19 virus, you may have such things as runny nose, sore throat, fever, cough, shortness of breath, breathing difficulties, and in more severe cases, you may encounter things like pneumonia, 
um, severe acute respiratory issues, or even kidney failure, or even debt you may run into. We have a simple uh, program in terms of dealing with co uh, coronavirus, and it's called the SSD program. SSD basically is symptom spread and death, symptom spread and death. So in three basic words, it gives you a complete overview of what is actually taking place. That's SSD, symptoms spread and death. So with symptoms, the coronavirus basically attacks cells in the respiratory system. And one of the things that we're going to share with you about this uh, novel coronavirus or COVID-19 is that it's far more unique than any other viruses that you have actually dealt with. Um, it has actually mutated numerous times, so the strain that we originally started with is not the strain that you're currently dealing with right now. So it has changed its uh, position numerous times. In addition to changing its position, um, one of the things that we found is that it actually has a malaria as well as an HIV component to it. And that's why they've been able to use um, an HIV drug to help treat the patients, as well as a malaria drug to actually help treat the patients. So we are actually going to look at it from that perspective in dealing with the Norvid um, coronavirus or COVID-19. So back to the SSD. You have runny nose, cough, sore throat, and sore in temperature. Uh, now let's go to the second S, which is the spread. The novel coronavirus spread to humans from, um, it is thought from animals, uh, could be, uh, some people say snake, some people saying it's the pandolin, some people say it's the bat, but you, when we do our research and we go a little further, you would realize that the position we're going to follow, we're going to follow the position of the pandolin, and we will tell you why. It says the virus is transmitted between humans in droplets from coughing and sneezing and touching or shaking hands. It enters humans through the nose as well as the mouth, then finds a host, um, host cell in the respiratory system. What's unique about this specific virus is that normally you know that virus actually requires a host um, for them to operate. Virus can even live within a bacteria. But with this situation, um, this virus has the ability to live outside of a host anywhere from um, 11 to 14 days. Anywhere from 11 to 14 days it can actually live outside of a host. And um, I was talking to a friend of mine, and one of the things that he was sharing, um, he was sharing that depending on the surface it went on, um, the, the length of life it actually had, where um, he mentioned when he read the documents, and he's on the line, so m maybe when we go to the Q&A, Brother Farley will come in and share a little bit more detail here. But he actually showed that when it was on a box, the time frame that it was able to live was much shorter versus if it was on like a metal surface or something along that line. It actually lived longer on a metal surface than it did on a literal box. And... Um, uh, I let, but when we go to Q&A or come down to the end, um, or maybe coming down to the end, or even right now, if Brother Farley wants to interject, um, just send me a little message and I can have him come in and give that explanation. But back to the second S, as in spread, um, it enters, um, enters humans through the nose and mouth and then finds the whole cell in the respiratory system. Um, and finally, the D in the SSD. In the D, you have most victims die from complications, including pneumonia and from swelling in the lungs. Severe pneumonia can kill people by causing them to drown in the fluids filling their lungs. 
The virus also causes swelling in the respiratory system, which can make it hard for the lungs to pass oxygen into the bloodstream. So the fact that we're dealing with respiratory issue, the fact that we're dealing with virus, the fact that we're dealing with, um, and I mentioned to you, we're taking the position of the pandolin, the fact that we're dealing with uh, a virus that has an HIV and a malaria component, these facts that I just mentioned are the positions that we're going to use to make the basis of our case against the COVID-19 virus. Okay, um, Causes of coronavirus. When coronavirus spreads to human, it is usually via contact with an animal that carries the virus. The World Health Organization said they did not know the specific source of the novel coronavirus. I can tell you that the original position that they have taken was um, usually animal to human. But since then, we see that they are transmission of human to human now. Uh, this, la this research that I'm going to share is rather amazing here. The one by um, Sheng Yongji and Exo Liu of South China Agricultural University in Guangzhou announced a press conference that they, may ha that they might have identified the pandolin as the source of the virus. Now, one of the things that you got you, you to keep in mind when dealing with the pandolin the pandolin with the coronavirus is a 99% match. So they basically found the same strain of virus in the pandolin that they are currently dealing with right now with the COVID-19 virus. The pandolin is also family to another one that we are familiar that looks pretty much the same like it. It's actually called the amadillo, and I know that many people who are listening, if you don't know what the amadillo is, just Google it and says image of amadillo and look it up. The amadillo, you know, who is cousin to the pandolin, the amadillo, the amadillo it actually carries the, vi the bacteria that causes leprosy. You, you know, so follow me. The cousin to the pandolin carries the virus that causes leprosy. Um, today, leprosy is actually called Hansen's disease. Leprosy is still present in the U.S. and many of the Caribbean islands. It's just that most people aren't aware that it is still present, but it is. Um, as a matter of fact, the new name, as I mentioned to you, is called Hansen's disease. And they actually have a vaccine to actually deal with it. That vaccine destroys the virus and um, destroys the bacteria. And once it destroys the bacteria, then those individuals um, will be healed of that issue. So the, the, the amadillo, which is cousin to the pandolin, the, you, you'll find that one of the things that these individuals do, they, these researchers do, and virologists may do, is that they study these things. And sometimes they may take the viruses, um, and this is how they, they, they actually try to come up with vaccines and different things along that line. And unfortunately, sometimes you have individuals like what we have heard in the news that may take that information and use it in a way that's not so kind. So I would suggest, and I, I would definitely tell you, as I've said before, the position that I am taking, I am taking the position of the pandolin for the source of the, the um, COVID-19 virus, simply because the match ha is a 99% match, much closer than that of a bat, than that of a snake, or any other sources that has been put out before us. And with that being said, you will see the direction that we're going to go with our treatment because this sets the foundation for the treatment position that we are taking. Researchers have suggested that, in, that the infection originated in the Hunan seafood wholesale market in Hunan, 
um, um, China in December of 2019. Uh, and I want to take you to some quotes written by Sister Ellen G. White in Second Selected Messages, page 419. Uh, it says here, some animals are inhumanely treated while being brought to the slaughter. They are literally tortured and after they have endured many hours of extreme suffering, are butchered. Swine have been prepared for market even while the plague was upon them and their poisonous flesh had spread contagious diseases and great mortality has followed. I would advise young men and women to give heed to this matter. Perilous times are before us. The whole world will be involved in perplexity and distress. Disease of every kind will be upon the human family and such ignorance as now prevails concerning the laws of health will, will result in great suffering and the loss of many lives that might be saved. That's the signs of the time, September 16th, 1893, or Helpful Living, on page 254. Could it have been a lab? Well, th th there's a lot of information out there. And as you can see, uh, the U.S. have made some arrests, um, suggesting that there's some level of tampering out there. We don't have all of the details on it, um, but the U.S. have made some reference that um, there's some lab, possibly lab situation involved. Um, so just thought I'd put that there. We don't have all the details for it, so we'll take a position. Could it have been? Um, it's very likely it could be, could have been. So the the fact is we're just going to deal with it that it's before us and take the position. Let's deal with what's before us rather than you know taking other positions that will take us in different directions. But we'll take the position that it is here and we're going to deal with it as we see it. The question is asked: Who are at risk? Who are at risk? You'll find that healthcare workers caring for patients with COVID-19, individuals with close contacts of patients with COVID-19, the elderly, those with underlying medical condition or low immunity, and young children. Adults over the age of 50, and they found about 80% of the people who died from the virus in China were over the age of 60 and 75% had pre-existing conditions such as heart disease, diabetes, um, you know, uh, basically any of those diseases that we, would be, that we consider as being heart disease, like the diabetes, the high blood pressure, the high cholesterol, the arthritis, the obesity, these would all be cl classified um, in a category called heart disease. Okay, and that information was according to a recent report we got from China's um, National Health Commission. How can I prevent coronavirus infection? If I don't have it, what can I do? If I do get it, what can I do? Uh, but before that, I just want to go back just a little to my previous slide. Um, I know that... I've looked at the, the research coming out of the UK. I've looked at it coming out of Italy. I've looked at it basically coming out of basically all different areas of the world. And it is consistent where we find that the elderly are the greatest at risk as we speak. So my advice to individuals that are on the line right now, if you have loved ones, um, family members, parents, or if it's you yourself, and you have pre-existing conditions, you may want to try your best to heed the counsel as we share because you'll find the more changes you make, the greater the result that you'll have in terms of surviving this viral infection. Okay, how can I prevent coronavirus and infection? Oh, I got to tell you a story. I got to share a rather um, amazing story. Um, I normally listen to uh, this one specific scientist. Uh, for, I've been listening to him for years, and I'm very, very skeptical in terms of who I listen to. 
and he put out a video of um, a family that was actually um, dealing with the uh, coronavirus. And this is, this is the video he put out. So I'll tell you the story. Um, young lady, uh, she is in the medical field. And, you know, she loves to study health and, um, and natural health to that. And she has been studying. And she, as she goes through her research, she realizes that high doses of vitamin C um, actually has the ability to, to kill or destroy virus. And what she did, what the research that she, sh she saw was that if you take 20 grams of vitamin C, and if you listen, 20 grams is a whole lot of vitamin C, but she read that if you took 20 grams, it will destroy um, um, uh, any form of virus that is in its part. So... She began taking 20 grams from the time that she read the information. Um, her mom is a skeptic. Her mom took some, but not 20 grams. Her mom, you know, made a judgment call and took what she thought was right. All of the other family members, there's a total of six of them in the home, all of the other family members began taking the vitamin C. Some took the 20 grams, some took less, but... In essence, they all began increasing their dosage of vitamin C. Well, after everyone was on it for a while, mom wanted some details for herself. So mom decided that she was going to go to the hospital and run the, the, the COVID-19 test just to make sure that, you know, she didn't have the coronavirus or to see if she did have it. And the reason for that, mom had some sniffles that she was dealing with, um, which is one of the reasons her daughter suggested that she actually use the vitamin C. So lo and behold, the test came back that mom was actually infected with the COVID-19 virus. Just to give you some heads up, mom is a diabetic, mom has high blood pressure, she has high cholesterol, she has a stent in, um, she even have, I think she also has a pacemaker. You, you know what I mean? Mom is sickly. You can't get any sicker than mom. And lo and behold, when they check mom into the hospital, up until day nine, mom is doing amazing. But once mom was checked in into the hospital, mom no longer had access to the vitamin C. Well, during the time, as I mentioned, she, she, she was quarantined because after she was diagnosed, they immediately quarantined her. Um, she no longer had access to the vitamin C and mom began getting progressively worse. She got so bad that to the point that the daughter thought that she, might have, she was going to lose her mom. So she actually spoke to the attending physician, and suggested to, to the physician that if it's possible that she can actually use um, vitamin C treatment on her mom, the physician agreed, and lo and behold, mom was able to begin to use the vitamin C and actually completely recovered from the COVID-19, even though she was an age, she was in her 70s, she was about 73, um, and she was an aged woman with multiple forms of heart disease, and she was able to, to, to recover fully. But now, here's, here's the amazing part of the story. When everyone was taking care of mom, initially, they did not have any, the, the, the proper form of covering. You know, they, they were handling mom, you know, without any gloves or anything like that. But after the concerns that there's a possibility of something, they began using just basic gloves, um, basic face masks, nothing fancy. And lo and behold, when they tested the five other family members who was interacting with mom with, without gloves and without face masks initially, but was taking the high dosage of vitamin C, none of them actually came down 
with the COVID-19 virus. Not one of the rest of the family members, even though they were in close proximity with mom, came down with the COVID-19 um, virus. So basically, you're going to realize that if the immune system is up to par and you are doing the part that you have to do, you can be in close proximity even without proper coverage and still not get the virus because the immune system will be in, in place. And one of the things that you're going to find, we have put a simple treatment together. We have how to prepare for a pandemic, the herbal remedies, and the presentation that I'm doing. And we put some simple present, um, uh, um, uh, uh, you can say protocols together where you do one, one thing in the morning, one thing at lunch, and one thing at night. Simple. I'm talking one item item. One item solution for the morning. One item solution for lunch. One item solution for supper. And you'll be amazed that once you do these one item item things, that's it. We, we don't want you doing any type of complex treatment or get bogged down financially and over-investing in this thing. We're going to use... Uh, we're going to use the KISS principle, keep it simple, and we're looking by God's grace to get full result. Okay? Um, I thought that it would, it's a good idea to actually share um, that testimony at this moment um, because it will give hope and encouragement to our people knowing that the simple things of God confounds the, the, the wise. So how can I prevent coronavirus infection? You want to make sure that you're regularly washing your hands with water and soap um, or use alcohol gel. Now, what we are doing here in Antigua for alcohol gel is that we will take the aloe vera gel, like an 8-ounce um, um, container of aloe vera gel, and we mix um, a portion of 70% base alcohol in it, and we'll drop about 30 drops of organic tea tree oil, 30 drops of oregano oil, um, pepper, 10 drops of peppermint, 10 drops of um, eucalyptus, 30 drops of clove oil, and you can drop, uh, and 30 drops of cinnamon oil, I'm sorry, 10 drops of cinnamon oil, and you can drop these all together in that um, alcohol base. Um, gel sanitizer with what I'm talking about and it will work wonders if you're wondering and as we get to the end we have simple things like a natural Lysol and different things that you can use um, in the country that I'm currently in right now um, all of the, the, the Lysol and wipes Clorox wipes everything is gone you, you know um, people are panicking and people are hoarding so I, I got the message earlier today that in New York that a friend went into BJ's to get some water and when they went in, there was absolutely no water in there. They said as soon as they put the water in the shelf, in no time, all the waters are gone. Let me tell you, people are not playing right now. People are hoarding, people are scared and people are doing whatever they have to do to save their lives because they want to live. So my, rec my recommendation to God's children, gather as much information that you can gather um, because there are many lives that are at risk and the more information we can share, the more professional you can sound in delivering the information, the m more souls you can secure for our Savior, especially in this great crisis in the midst of this pandemic okay you want to make sure you wear masks and avoid visited crowded spaces um, places or you can say spaces uh, so what I suggest and I can tell you what to do uh, but I would suggest that I personally would not go to different things like you know due to the fact that we go to church in Antigua I'm avoiding going to church at this present moment. And I'm just going to stay at home. And we're going to do online services. You know, we'll return our tithes and offering um, to our local church. Or if we choose, we can go online to our, um, to 
the church's website and we can pay um, our tithes and offering online. So we have an option, we can do it online or we can go to the church and just drop it off, either which we can do it. But we have taken a position, we are avoiding all major gathering. We are, and, and you know, we have a young child. Um, our child is eight months old, and um, I would actually like to just make sure that she's not at any major risk um, in a public setting. You, you'll find that not everybody in a public setting is mindful and kind. You know, people still want to hug and kiss, and it says, oh, don't worry about it. But guess what? There are people who are taking it serious, like myself and our family. And as a result, we would prefer if people don't try to hug or kiss um, our child. And, as, and to just make sure we're on the safe side, we'll just stay home and make sure that we're mindful. I can tell you this is around the time that many churches tend to have um, major evangelistic series. Now, let me tell you something, saints. If NCAA and the NBA, these folks who love money, are canceling their major um, programs, who are you and I to say that we're going to continue with ours? It actually will, will cause the media to look upon us as being callous or careless in terms of our approach to mankind. So my recommendation, my suggestion is that you know, if you're in an area where your church is still meet, meeting on a larger basis, you may want to encourage them that it's not going to hurt us if, you know what I mean, if we do online church or if we take a, a look at a different position in terms of congregating, if we, even if we do so. As a matter of fact, in some states, they have already banned um, congregation of individuals. So you may want to even consider looking at your states because I thought I, before I came online, I just saw an article that came out of New York that there should be no congregation of, of groups. So um, there you have it for at least New York. And I guarantee you that if New York does it that way, look out. All the other states will be doing it that way too in terms of congregation. Keep your hands and fingers away from your eyes, nose, and mouth. Cover your mouth and nose when coughing and sneezing. Avoid close contact with anyone showing symptoms of respiratory illnesses, um, such as coughing and sneezing and things along that line. What we also did here in Antigua, um, my wife and I, we run a health food store and restaurant. And so we have staff that works, works for us. And we actually had a staff meeting. We, we even had a staff meeting with Scotia Bank here in Antigua, and we were able to take a, t take a moment and train Scotia Bank as well as our staff how to prepare for um, a potential pandemic and how to prepare for a potential um, virus um, invasion within our country. So. Uh, we had a chance to share that which we have, which is also what we are sharing with everyone this evening. And we are sharing how to prepare. The more prepared individuals are, the better it is. So one of the basic positions to remember, because we have two more presentations, about three more presentations coming on this. One is how to prepare for a pandemic, or in a pandemic, I should say. And the other is all the herbal remedies um, in reference to this. Okay, um, so how to prepare? We're going to take our time and we're going to show you how. And, and we have the handouts, we have the notes that you can share with your friend or family members. Now, saints, listen, if you don't have anything better, my recommendation, use what we have. You can even take what we have and then edit it and improve upon it. But if you don't have anything and you use what we have, who knows, maybe the little that we give you would be sufficient to save a few lives. And that's what really matters in the midst of these type of crises. Okay, how can I prevent the coronavirus infection? Avoid eating insufficiently cooked meats or meat products. Avoid visiting markets selling carcasses of live or dead animals. Um, seek medical attention immediately if you have symptoms including cough, sneezing, um, or anything along that line. You'll find that even right now in some countries, 
that individuals are basically doing self-quarantine. Um, a friend just contacted me today and said that they found the very first case, case in her country and the person knew that they potentially had the infection. So what they did, that specific person did, they avoided contact with others, which was very mindful. They kept in an isolated area. When they got to the country, they immediately reported themselves and they did self-isolation. Um, I definitely say, oh, I give God praise for that individual because earlier on, a friend shared a video with me where someone, like they potentially might have been sick, and they were just, they took off their mask, licked their hands, and they wiped their hands on the pole in one of the trains, you know. And everybody is on, the, on a train. And remember this now, if someone puts um, their spit or their, their fluid on a metal um, uh, uh, pole, it can stay there for a very long time. It can stay there. And anyone now who come and touch that and accidentally put their hand on their face or in any open area where it can have entrance, they are now at risk. You've got to remember, there are people that are out there that are very evil. They are not mindful. They do not care and love mankind. So that's why you need to show extreme care. Um, steps to help prevent the spread of um, COVID-19. Um, stay home except to get medical care. Separate yourself from other people in your home. Call ahead before visiting your doctor and wear a face mask. Now, one of the things that you'll find is that um, I am sure that some of the physicians are somewhat scared themselves. Uh, I, I remember yesterday I was talking to a good friend of mine and when she mentioned to her daughter that uh, they had found some cases just down the street from where she works, her daughter said, you know, Mom, are you still going to work? And she says, yeah. And her daughter says, please don't go. You know, I don't want anything to happen to you. You, you know, so, uh, so you'll find that the more informed our families and children are about this situation, the, the less scared there will be in terms of what's taking place and the more confident they'll be in terms of building the immune system and staying positive. Okay? You should wear a face mask when you're around other people, share in a room or vehicle, and before you enter a healthcare provider's office. If you're not able to wear a face mask, for example, because it caught it causes trouble breathing, then people who live with you should not stay in the same room with you or they should wear a face mask if they enter your room. Okay. Um, cover your coughs and sneezes. Cover your mouth and nose with a tissue when you cough or sneeze. Throw used tissue in a lined trash um, can and wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. If soap and water are not available, immediately clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contain at least 60% um, alcohol. I personally like, you know, like 70%. 70% is what we're using here in Antigua. Um, so seven, uh, I would just say let's update that. In actuality, I... I'll change it right now while we are speaking. So in that way, when individuals do go back and look at it, it will say 70. Okay, so I personally would suggest 70% um, alcohol base. Covering all surface of your hands and rubbing them together until they feel dry. Soap and water should be used preferentially um, if hands are visibly dirty. Okay, monitor your symptoms. Um, seek uh, prompt medical um, attention if your illness worsens. Shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, you know. So just be mindful um, in that situation. You've got to do your self-monitoring. And if you find that the temperature is rising, uh, 
you definitely want to look for options. Now, let me share this with you so you understand. Let's say you do go and seek medical help. I will strongly tell you this, you know, strong. I take a very strong position on this, that um, antibiotics cannot help, okay? So whatever you do, wherever you go, do not take any antibiotics, antibiotics from no one. Antibiotics are for bacteria, not for viruses. You know, so if a physician um, or a medical practitioner is offering you antibiotics, say, Doc, thank you, but no thanks, simply because I'm dealing with a virus, and correct me if I'm wrong, isn't that for bacteria? You, you know, so... You, you know, you can definitely put that little warning note there. Uh, I do want to share now, there are exceptions to the rule. It's not a blanket thing. Because as you remember early on, I tell you that viruses can live in bacteria. You know, if they have done some tests and they find that um, the virus is living in a bacteria and they choose to use some level of help with that, you said, blessed be the name of the Lord. But other than that, you should never use antibiotics when dealing with viruses because it does not work and it lowers your immune system and makes the situation worse. Natural remedies to build your immune system. Um, as we are getting to this section, uh, I can actually take you um, to... A simple scriptural quote in 1 Corinthians, I think it's around chapter 12, um, and it talks about that, in that specific area, it actually literally talks about those members of the body that we think are less honorable or necessary. And it, it actually comes back and says, upon these he bestow abundant honor, and this is Christ. Okay, so a lot of the times uh, you'll find that individuals, they'll go to a doctor and the doctor will easily take out the appendix, they'll take out the adenoids, they'll take out the tonsils and says, oh, by the way, you don't need, you don't need the adenoids, you don't need the tonsils. What they don't realize is both the tonsils and the adenoids, they make up a major part of the immune system. You, you, you know, these items are taken first offenders, uh, uh, first intruders. You know, if these intruders are coming in, um, these adenoids and the tonsils, they are dealing with first intruders. You know, so when we think that these things aren't necessary, just that, that, that's why the Bible says, they are necessary and upon these, Christ bestow more abundant honor. So my recommendation to individuals, whatever you do, do not take out organs unless it's a life and death, okay? And um, try and deal with, with um, organ issue um, with as much natural remedies as you can. Fight until there's absolutely no hope, uh, you know. Um, so if someone who have removed their tonsils, or if they have removed their, um, their um, adenoids, know right off the get-go that you're going to have a compromised immune system. And there are certain procedures that you'll have to take to make sure that you have some level of compensation for that removal. If you're one also who have removed your appendix, know that if either your appendix or tonsils have been removed, that individual will be required to take a supplemental B12 for the rest of their life because the body will not be able to produce B12 on its own because it requires do those two organs in order to, um, to produce B12 on its own. So keep that in mind. Natural remedies to build your immune system, and I thought that little story was appropriate. I can tell you in this entire presentation, this, this is probably my favorite quote in the entire presentation because this reminds me of salvation. This reminds me of salvation. And listen to what it says, which is deep, you know. 
It says, God has pledged himself to keep his living machinery in helpful action if the human agent will obey his laws and cooperate with God. Isn't that deep? I've got to read that a second time. And that's a letter written January 11th, 1897. It says, God has pledged himself. God has done what? He has pledged himself to keep this living machinery in helpful action if the human agent will obey his laws and cooperate with God. What is the immune system? The immune system is our body's intelligent and highly efficient protective process in the body that protects us from potentially harmful substances by identifying and killing pathogens um, such as infectious agents caused by foreign antigens such as bacteria, viruses, fungus, uh, fungi, toxins, chemicals, drugs, and foreign particles. When your immune system is functioning properly, it is on a constant mission to seek and destroy these foreign substances, distinguishing them from your cells and tissues as it goes about its work. Um, and with that being said, you remember the story that I shared about that, that medical personnel who loves natural remedies and the family of six, where um, all six of them at first was doing extremely well on pure vitamin C and then when mom was taken off of the vitamin C she took a turn for the worse they got her back in the vitamin C and mom made a full recovery even though she had many pre, um, pre existing conditions okay I, I have another story similar story to share with you um, so you can understand the importance of building the immune system in the midst of the crisis and someone is going to say brother Luke when do I start the answer is yesterday okay when do I start yesterday so you don't start today you start when yesterday meaning that you should have already started you don't want to wait until the diagnosis to get started you should start yesterday so in that way that system is up running, functioning, and you are prepared for what is before you. Let me share an amazing story. This is like one of my favorite stories. Um, in 01, when we had the Ebola outbreak in Gabon, Central Africa, and for individuals who are wondering, where is Gabon? Look at that image for me. You see Cameroon. If you look at the upper, let me use my little cursor here. You see Cameroon right here at the top, right? You come to the bottom, you see Republic of Congo, right between Cameroon and Congo. And the reason why I like to point out Cameroon, they say that the people of Antigua resemble the Cameroonians. Uh, 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 Cameroonians, I think that's the way you say that. So we resemble the people from Cameroon. You, you know, so they, they are trying to make some sort of connection between us and the people of Cameroon and letting them know that if we ever leave Antigua and go to Cameroon they should make provision for us because it's very likely that we are from Cameroon it, it, you know that's amazing I was thinking maybe I can go down and possibly claim some property um, you know because I was taken from Cameroon you know that's what I'm thinking maybe I can go down and make sure that they have some property secured for me I just thought I'd just put a little um, smile on your face in saying that okay so Gabon is between Cameroon and the Republic of Congo so I just wanna let you kinda just think position and just kinda think where it's at okay listen to this now Gabonese doctors tested 24 individuals that had been directly exposed to infected materials uh, it's very likely that these people are medical personnel feces vomit saliva sweat or even blood watch this now none of them ever became ill let's continue blood testing reveal that 11 of the 24 showed that they had become infected with the Ebola virus 
yet never became sick. So listen to this. You can be in close proximity to the Ebola virus without protective gear, be exposed to infect, uh, infective secretion, and never become infected. If the Ebola virus gets into your body, you have the potential to fight it off without ever getting sick. This information was taken from uh, information uh, related to evading Ebola by Dr. David DeRose. Now, the corona is different than the Ebola virus. They, as a matter of fact, they tried to use some of the same medication and none of the medication that was uh, successful um, in helping Ebola patients was successful in helping the coronavirus um, patients. N none, okay? Now, here is what's amazing about the coronavirus, which is unusual. It has some weird principles to it. As I mentioned to you, it has the, um, the malaria component to it. It has the HIV component to it. Well, it has a few more weird components too, okay? Listen to the weird components it has. The component it has is that an individual can easily be reinfected. Normally, what, what the biggest positives about, you know what I mean, uh, maybe getting these things is that once the body sees it or have a little of it in the system, the body can turn around and make antibodies against it, and as a result, you get that natural immunity. So that's the problem that they're having with the vaccine, because here's the problem. If they infect you with a little of it, you have the potential of getting reinfected with the COVID-19 virus, and they found that with the reinfection at that time, it's very likely it will do some form of respiratory damage the second time it come around, because at that time it will have a little bit more advantage in dealing with your immune system because it, it, it was already there, it fought the first time, and now has come back in a different way, um, attacking, attacking its host. Um, also, too, so that's, that's one thing. Uh, you have a very high reinfection rate with the COVID-19. That's, that's one issue you're dealing with. The second thing that you're dealing with is that you, you see in this one with the Gabon, blood testing revealed that 11 of the 24 showed that they had become infected with the Ebola virus, yet never became sick. One of the things they found with the COVID-19 is that once you become infected, even though you don't get sick, they find that you can still spread it. Okay, so that's what, one of the unique principle or trait about the COVID-19 even though someone uh, uh, is not sick by it, they can potentially still spread it. Okay? So one of the things that you got to make sure is that in the event there's someone in the present that is sick, you want to make sure you show caution and make sure that the whole family still do some level of isolation. Individuals that are in the home still do some level of isolation simply because of the fact that you can be infected without showing symptoms and still spread the COVID-19. Okay, so, but the hope is, is that if the immune system is up to par, you're able to fight and fight success, um, successfully. Okay, and you can actually still be in a position where you don't have to worry about any major damage or issue if the immune system is up to par, just like what I shared with you earlier with the young lady with the vitamin C, where they did not even get infected. You, you know what I mean? They stayed healthy throughout the whole situation, even though mom had the COVID-19. And with mom having the COVID-19, and she began taking, she, she began the vitamin C therapy um, from the time they found that she had the sniffle, which means she had COVID-19 at the time that she was administered the vitamin C. And through that, she was able to still um, function fully without any problem at all, even though she had 
all the 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 the, the coronary um, heart disease issue. It's when she stopped taking the vitamin C is when she actually begin um, going down downhill. So I thought that I'll share that with you, and I thought that that would be a good way to, um, you know, just keep a focus on it. Now, uh, uh, this is a rather amazing virus. The virus is highly intelligent. Um, it's a lot. It's very unusual. It is not. In, it doesn't take the normal part of a traditional virus. Um, it takes some parts and turns and spins that traditionally your virus wouldn't take. But it's highly, highly intelligent virus we're dealing with. Um, as I mentioned to you, it has a HIV and a malaria component to it. So what I'm going to do. Uh, I want to pause right here because it's a couple minutes to nine. Give everybody a chance that they can start asking questions. And then we will continue Saturday evening with part two. Okay? So just want to pause right here. Um, and let me turn that recording off.